let me let me say this to uh to browner so so okay so go back 2004 ish five ish whatever it is the chargers then the san diego chargers go to new england and beat the patriots and it's kind of the start of where the chargers were being considered like a legit team at the time so breeze is the quarterback and brady's the quarterback of course this is going back i mean this is 16 freaking years ago dude and so Breeze and the Chargers win the game. And Billy Ray and I had this deal with Breeze where he would come on the air every Monday after the games. I literally, you know, I paid him myself. Like I, I did the deal with Breeze, me and Drew. There were no marketing directors back then for Breeze. He wasn't a big star. It was me and Drew. I went to the San Diego County Toyota dealers. They gave me, I don't remember what it was, $25,000. And I gave it to Breeze. I literally said, Drew, I want to hire you to be our Monday morning quarterback. How much is it going to take? We decided on a number, the two of us. And I got Toyota to write me a check and I wrote him a check. And that's the way it was. It was, it was very easy back then. So Breeze comes on the air on Monday morning after the Chargers beat the Patriots. And I say, hey, Drew, you beat Tom Brady and the Patriots. What did Brady say after the game? How, how did that post-game interaction go? And Breeze tells the story very innocently, by the way. I mean, he was a young kid. He wasn't a star, and the Chargers weren't stars, and the Brady had already been a Super Bowl champion, maybe twice by this time. And Breeze tells the story. But he goes, no, man, he there was no handshake. He went right into the locker room. We're like, whoa, wait, because they played against each other in college. So this, you know, this Big Ten goes back. Wait a second. Brady didn't shake your hand after the Chargers came to New England and beat the Patriots on their home field, not a handshake, not a congratulations, not a how's the family, not a good luck this season. Zippo. Brady has spent his entire career running off the field like a sore loser when he loses, which is infrequently, of course. I mean, he he's, he's probably has a win percentage of like 75% in his career. But when he loses, and in particular, when he played the way he did last night, the, the L.A. defense did exactly what I expected them to do, is focus on Aaron Donald, who was going to create havoc, which was going to open up opportunities for lots of other guys to make plays, particularly on the defensive line. When you see guys named Morgan Fox, who you've never heard of, make a play in the end zone, where when the question was whether or not Brady's arm was going forward, and the referees blew the whistle like immediately, you know, didn't even give it the, the play a chance to breathe. Other guys make plays on that Rams defense to make Brady uncomfortable. This is why the Brady quarterback is no longer really viable in the NFL. The quarterback position has completely changed to the athletic quarterback versus the drop back pocket passing quarterback. Aaron Donald did exactly what I expected. The other parts of the defensive front did what I expected. The secondary played really well as expected. And, and the Rams offense did just enough to not lose the game. They tried they, they though. Tried. Yeah, they didn't go. They tried their best. You know what's happening to the Rams is by sharing their house with the Chargers. The Chargers are rubbing off on them, and the, and at times the Rams look like a team that's trying to lose a game. So this is it, guys. Jump in here. Brady's a sore loser. That's my point. But I've been saying I've been saying this for so long, and people were always making excuses. Oh, he's a competitor. I said this in the beginning of the season when the Bears beat him. And you know what people said to me? COVID. Oh, COVID. Did you see what People happened? People were still with... saying it last night, too. Yeah. Oh, did you see what happened with COVID? No, dude. I... He shakes hands when he wins. COVID's still out there. He can't shake hands when he loses. And again, right. the year be... the year prior to this year, he didn't shake hands. I like, I don't, so he gets a pass for certain things that I just find to be very interesting that other guys don't get a pass for. Can you, mean, you... black guys? Can you imagine if Cam He's... Newton didn't shake hands? Right. At, at the fifty yard line, if, after after winning or losing, right? You're saying that he, you're saying that Brady gets preferential treatment because he's Mister America. Yes, he's cap he's Captain America. He's he's white. He's incredibly handsome. He's the greatest quarterback, or at least the winningest quarterback in the history of the NFL. He's married to the the ultra model. He's got the perfect life. Tom Brady has a um, a can't touch this sort of uh, persona. I would liken it very much to like Phil Mickelson. You know, Phil Mickelson is he's got a great big smile and everybody loves Phil and Phil's the greatest family guy ever. But you know, you dig in a little bit and you go, okay, there's a little bit of uh, stuff over here. Same you with know? Aaron Rodgers. 
But they'll shake your hand. Mm. Yeah, Phil Mickelson will shake your hand. He'll take his hat off for you. Yeah, these are, these are good sports. I don't mean to mix Phil up, and I'm not trying to knock on Phil. I'm just saying that you know certain guys just have a level of um, you can't touch them. You know, and Tom Brady's one of those guys, and and America's not pissed off at Tom Brady for being a sore loser. They don't care. They I, love him. It's, we love him. It's respect. It's respect. It is respect. You go out there, you compete, and if you don't win, guess what? You shake the other guy's hand, and you go, I'll get him next time. We have that problem right now in the White House. Well, wait a second. We have that problem in other places in the NFL. How about the other day during the Tennessee-Baltimore game? when there was a lot of back and forth between Mike Vrabel and John Harbaugh. And after the game, Vrabel's team wins. Harbaugh is too fired up and too pissed off. And rather than shaking hands, he he kind of blows him off. And, and Vrabel's like, okay. But that's different. Wasn't it, no, 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 no. Uh, See, that's different. That's different. Why? Because they had a beef. Yeah, but that's starting. But they're professionals. You guys no, remember no, 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 back no, no. in the day when uh, Jim Harbaugh and was the Jim Schwartz almost fought? No. Chase oh, yes. the field. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Jim Schwartz was the coach of the Lions. And yeah. then remember when Jim Harbaugh was the coach at Stanford and Pete Carroll was the coach at USC. Yeah. <laughs> and Pete Carroll says to, to Harbaugh, what's your problem? Yeah. yeah. I'm you all know? in. See, that's the thing, too. Like, if Brady's that pissed, dude, go show Goff how pissed you are. Let's get some drama in midfield. Like, these handshakes are, I, to me, they're so pointless, anyways. But, like, if you're going to be pissed, like, show us that you're pissed. Don't just run off like a little baby, dude. I love the analysis, too. I love that we are all analyzing. You know, not what happened in the game, like not what's wrong with the Tampa offense. Rather, the Rams win, and we're all more concerned about what Brady does after the game. All right. 